So for this job, the first thing I would do is disconnect this band clamp here. Obviously mine's not gonna come off the nice way, so I'm just gonna cut it. I'm gonna try and save the clamp if possible. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is try and cut this bolt here. If that doesn't work, I'll just cut the clamp off. Now this clamp is reusable if you want to do so. So if you follow the oxygen sensor wire up, you'll see this white connector here. Press on the locking tab, unplug it, and that usually is best when you unthread it, otherwise the wire will keep wrapping itself around itself. So now let's unbolt it. There we go. Watch out when it breaks free. Let's just go ahead and remove it the rest of the way. There it is. From the top, let's disconnect the upstream O2 sensor and then unthread it from the exhaust. I'm gonna use my O2 sensor socket here. It's time to heat it up a little bit. It's gonna go ahead and heat up the exhaust pipe a little bit, right around the base here, where the oxygen sensor threads in. That's gonna hopefully expand the threads and allow me to take this out a little bit easier, because it is pretty stuck. All right, let's try this again. O2 sensor socket. Watch out, because now things are hot. All right, let's try this now. Oh yeah, a little bit of heat did it. <sighs> okay, that's out. And right up by the engine, you can see three out of the four mounting nuts and studs that hold this exhaust onto the manifold. And as you can see, mine are not in great condition. So I'm gonna cut this stud a little bit shorter because I'm gonna use an extractor socket on it and the stud is a little too long for my extractor socket. So I'm gonna start by doing that. I'm gonna cut this one as well as that one up there. So both of them I'm gonna chop up a little shorter and that one over there and the one up top are actually still in good condition. So I don't need to use an extractor socket on those but I'm just gonna anticipate the need of one of those sockets on these two. So let's just go ahead and cut these shorter. Now, of course, if yours isn't as rusty, that's great. You don't have to go through all this, but unfortunately I do. So I'm just gonna show you how I do it. Just as preventative measure, I'm gonna apply a little bit of heat to this nut over here. Try to heat up the nut if you are using heat, not anything else, because um, you, you want to expand the nut around the stud and that will hopefully break the rust free. All right, success. Again, hopefully you don't have to use heat. Let's take off this top nut. Might need to apply some heat to this one as well. Oh yeah, okay, let's heat it up. All right, there we go. Well, this nut broke free um, and it's too loose for the ratchet, but obviously I can't touch it. So let's do something different here. Now let's do the same to the other two. All right, back underneath on this bottom one, I'm gonna try and hammer a 12 millimeter socket on and then I'm gonna heat it up. 
try to get this out of here. three out of four. Okay, last one right up there. You know the deal by now. I'm gonna see if the socket will fit on it. Which is a 12 millimeter, one size smaller. I thought I was gonna use an extractor socket, but if this works, I'll just go this way. Okay. Oh yeah, comes off easy peasy. There we go. At this point, we can separate the exhaust up here. Oh yeah, perfect. At this point, we'll have to pop off some of these exhaust hangers in order to make this exhaust be able to slide back so we can unhook it from the front pipe and I'm gonna use some pliers. I have it bungee corded here so that it doesn't fall and I have it strapped in the back. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, if you're on the ground, you don't have to worry about it that much. You can just use some jack stands or a jack or something to support it. Pop these exhaust hangers off. I find it very easy to use pliers like this, like I just did, and take it off the hanger. So let's move our way back. This is the only one here. All the other ones are at the muffler. Back at the muffler, I have the muffler supported as well. I'm just going to remove some of these. There we go. Last one is going to be right here at the tip of the exhaust. There we go. I have this muffler supported like this with a ratchet strap. You can do whatever you have to do to make sure that it stays there, but still has enough movement to swing back and forth because that's the point of all this. I'm gonna slowly loosen up on my ratchet strap. Okay. This is giving me quite a bit of slack. That's perfect. Now we can take this and basically separate the two. I'm just gonna wiggle it back and forth as it's slowly coming out. There it goes. All right, this pipe can hang right here by the bungee cord, and this one can now get removed. Here it is. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean inside of this pipe a little bit, that way the new pipe can have a nice flat area to seal up against. You don't want any exhaust leaks, that'd be bad. On the manifold, take out the old gasket, and then we have to clean up this surface because otherwise the new gasket won't seal up. So to do that, I'm gonna use a sanding disc. You can use whatever you need to clean it up, wire brush, sandpaper, but a sanding disc will work the fastest. Now it's time to slide this in. I know my gasket isn't on yet. I will put that on in a minute. I just want to slide this pipe in because the gasket's most likely going to just fall off the studs up there. So situate this where it needs to be and then make sure that it slides in to this other pipe, which it does. All right, now we can go up there and put the gasket on. Always use a new gasket on exhaust components, otherwise you'll have a leak. And this is the gasket that was provided with the exhaust pipe, so we'll slide this on just like that. Hopefully it doesn't fall off. It does. Now, let's put this pipe on here. There we go. 
Let's attach a couple of the mounting nuts. I'm not looking to tighten them yet. I just want to have this attached so that it doesn't fall back out. All right, so I have all four mounting nuts in. They're not bottomed out yet, but I wanna put the muffler hangers on first, so let's do that. Let's put the exhaust hangers back on. If you spray a little bit of silicone spray on the hangers, that will usually help you slide them on a little easier. All right, there's one. There's another one. All right, this is the last one by the muffler. Okay, all the exhaust hangers are on. I'm gonna remove my bungee cord support here and the ratchet strap in the back. Now with the hangers in place, I'm gonna go ahead and snug these up. That way the exhaust can be pressed up against the manifold here. Then I'll tighten up the clamp. I'm gonna go in a cross pattern. That way the uh, exhaust can clamp onto the gasket properly. Tighten up the top one once I go up there to put the O2 sensor in. But these three that I can get from the bottom are nice and tight. Oh yeah. All right, so let's tighten up the clamp. So if you want, you can put on a new clamp or since I was able to save this clamp, I, uh, I'm just gonna reuse it. I have to squish it down a little bit though. This bolt isn't perfect and it's not meant for this, but it's gonna work. Let's put the downstream O2 sensor in. That's bottomed out. Let's grab a 22 millimeter wrench and snug that up. All right, that's snug. Here's the uh, connector for it. Plug it in. Make sure it clicks and resecure the connector. Okay, that's nice and tight. Next, we'll get the O2 sensor installed. So that's bottomed out. Let's set this up so we can give it a quick snug. Okay, that's nice and tight. Grab your connector, plug it in. Make sure that it clicks. At this point, you wanna turn on the engine, make sure everything runs smoothly, make sure you have no check engine lines, and make sure you have no exhaust leaks. That is very important because you don't wanna get carbon monoxide poisoning inside your passenger compartment.